Esther chapter 3 verse 1 After these things King Ahasuerus promoted Haman the son of Hamadatha the Agagite and advanced him and set his seat above all the princes who were with him Now today my message is topic is the generation of the wicked will not last long but the generation of the righteous who are respectful to God who feared God will be blessed um, now who was Haman it is written there we know we know what Haman did and his end but that's not not what I'm talking about first but firstly let's see his earlier generation uh, we can see that he was an Agagite now let's turn our pages to first Samuel 15 and there we will see that uh, Samuel was ordered by God to tell Saul uh, to go and uh, destroy the Amalekites and the king of the Amalekites was a uh, king Agag and Haman was an Agagite you understand Agagite Agag was the from the generations of Amalek and Amalek was uh, of the family who from start was against God's people we see when um, children of Israel come out of Egypt we see that Amalek uh, Amalekites were against God's people you should know that in any generation in the present in the future in the past there will be people there will be generations who will trouble and persecute the children of God but you should know that no witchcraft persecution or anything else will stop God Paul wrote right no tribulation, distress, uh, sorrow, sickness, nothing will stop us from praising our God. So, uh, this Agag, uh, uh, Haman was the son of Agagite. And you know what happened. Amalek was defeated. Agag was defeated. Um, now, Haman also, at the end, was uh, hanged instead of Mordecai. So, you should know that in any circumstances, any time, there may be powers, there may be people who rise up against God's people, but God will give them good strength to what happened when Haman go, gave uh, the king to uh, kill the Jews or God's people at that time. Um, uh, but um, because Mordecai and Esther and all the children of God, the Jews, prayed to God, that's when God heard. So you have to remember, whenever persecution, troubles, tribulations, anything rises against you, you should know that our God is a mighty, mighty God. So let's uh, see who is our God. Um, when Paul was taken to Areopagus, um, it is written in the Bible in Romans, um, they, uh, they asked, who is this God? Who is this new God that you're bringing? So there are 12 things. One, he was the one who made the world and everything in it. He was the one who made everything in this world, okay? Not that stone idols, because he made all those stones, okay? These be man-made idols and nothing. They have eyes, but they cannot see. I told you many times, eyes they can not see, nose they cannot smell, mouth they cannot say anything, skin, heart, anything, they cannot feel. Um, but God made this amazing world for us. Second, a ruler of heaven and earth. He is the almighty God, the ruler of heaven and earth. Three, he doesn't dwell in man-made temples. You know it is written, we are the temple of God. If we are pure in God, then we uh, he dwells in us. He doesn't dwell in man-made temples uh, made with gold, silver, uh, not that. But he dwells in those people who uh, are faithful to him, who are, pu uh, who, who are pure in his sight. Four, he gives breath to all living being, the beings and life. Five, he doesn't have any problems. His touch, we, we may think that um, he uh, is uh, needs praise. He needs uh, he needs a man support, but uh, and that his his he needs money. He needs a, no. His treasures are unlimited, and he is making a home for us in heaven. Six, he has no need of services from men. Because he is the Almighty God, he has created men, he has created everything. Okay, so he has no need of services from men. Seven, he made all men. Eight, he keeps fences and boundaries on men. Because whenever problems come, we see in Job, 
uh, Job chapter 1 that Satan tells you have kept your friends around him and all that he does. That's why he is happy in you and that's why he has become rich. So when God removed the friends, only Satan could enter with the permission of God to trouble uh, Job and take away all that. That's why he keeps fences around us uh, with the Holy Spirit so that we are safe in his hands. Nine, he's very close to men. He's not far away. If a man sins and tells God, I've done a big sin, please forgive me by your precious blood, then God will forgive. But you should not do it again and again because his, uh, we should not take his grace in vain. It is written in the Bible. Then he tells everyone to repent and made a way to repentance. Jesus, he made, Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. We cannot go to the Father or God without him. Uh, 11. He has made a judge for our judgment. Uh, 12. A God who has fixed time for the judgment. Um, the, but So that's what I'm saying. Because no uh, evil powers can atta attack the people of God. If they attack also God will ha keep his fence over them and keep them safe and God himself will deal with them. There are more people. So one example of the generation of wicked will not last. I told you is Haman. And now the second one is Lot because when we see Abraham is the next one I'm telling the generation of the righteous will be blessed. But Lot, what happened? He was always a type of against God. When uh, you see when Abraham and Lot's uh, sh uh, shepherds they had fight, um, Abraham told you go uh, wherever you want. He Lot never cared to ask God or anything. He just told, yeah, that's a good place. I'll go there. Then he slowly went, went, went into the darker, darker place and went to Sodom. There also when the angels came to take him away from Sodom, he was so delaying. He was like, okay, I'll say, let me, let me help. Let me take that. Let, go to my son-in-law and tell them and all. And the angels were furious actually because God had commanded them to tell Lord to come out because uh, because of Abraham's sake. For Abraham's sake, you have to remember that because Abraham prayed to God, please God, keep Lord safe. So that's why uh, God had to take Lord away from the city. And you see somehow the angels pulled them, pulled them out of that city. And when they came to the gate, um, you see that the angels told run away, run to the mountains, run, but uh, and don't turn back, of course. And uh, but Lord said, can I go to Zohar because I will not survive. Uh, yeah, that's what God actually intended to destroy Zohar. But because of Lord, uh, we see that Zohar was not destroyed. Otherwise, God would have destroyed that town also. Um, also, two bad generations came out of him, the Moabites and we see Ammonites also. Those two bad, so those generations were also destroyed by God. Um, now, the generation of the righteous, the generation of the righteous to God will be blessed. Uh, let's, uh, let's see. Um, so, what are the specialties of Abraham? First, Abraham walked by faith, not by sight. Uh, so, he didn't live for himself. We see that he was very humble. He was such a humble man. He told Lord, you go here. I will take the other direction. He didn't live for himself. He lived for others. He was not a troublemaker. He was a peacemaker. Uh, his hospitality, when the angels of God came, when God himself came, he was so humble. He uh, he gave the fattened the best calf and big feast. He didn't give the leftovers. No, he gave the best. And... Um, we see he lived by faith uh, and um, not by sight. Uh, Abraham also, whenever he went, sad places, good places, whenever, whatever situation it was, he always made altars to God. He always used to pray to God. He always used to thank God. Any situation, that's how we should be. We should be thankful to God. We should not live for ourselves, but for others. Um, we should also live for ourselves, of course, but... You know, we should also be hospitable to others. We should not only be selfish like, I am the greatest. No, we should know to uh, be hospitable. We should live by faith because sight in this world is no use. Sight, we can only see the present, but in the future, you should hope in God. Uh, Lot, uh, we see, was only caring about tents. 
building tents uh, having good things abraham built altars to god in any situation he always thanked god and the abraham said i will give um, and he was always very thankful to god and we should know there are many examples in the bible of people who are blessed and people who are perished so we should know that the righteous it is written in psalms 1 i will read it to you this chapter psalms 1 tells the correct thing the way of the righteous and the end of the ungodly this chapter tells it there are many chapters many 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 on this book of psalms that tells but let's read psalms 1 it is written blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly nor stands in the path of sinners not sits in the seat of the scornful but his delight in the, is in the law of the lord and in his law he meditates day and night so we have to meditate in the law of god we should not walk in the counsel of the ungodly we should uh, we should not have an enmity with them because god said love your enemies but you should also not go into their counsel you should not believe their uh, false teachings but you should also love them um, but his delight is in the law of the lord and in his law he meditates day and night he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water who what are the trees who are planted in the by the rivers of water they grow from strength to strength they are very strong they are amazing trees they they have lot of strength those trees that brings forth its fruit in its season what are the main purpose purpose of trees uh, the trees that bring fruit they have to bring fruit and we have to also bring fruit in the due season and as god has said that um jesus is as a mediator for us and uh, there is, jesus has said a parable once that the master of a vineyard uh, said that Now this tree is not giving much fruit i have been waiting for years but he is not and but the worker of the vineyard said please wait he will i will put more manure into him and let's see if he bears if it doesn't bear next year i will cut it down so that is the thing god will give more and more of his holy spirit to us for us to bear fruit for us to bring souls to christ and that's what we have to do we should not be a bearless tree because that's what happened when jesus went to uh, he was very hungry uh, and saw a fig tree uh, which had no fruits he cursed the tree that's what or we will wither after that if we don't bear fruit so we have to bear fruits for christ uh, the he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in its season whose leaf also shall not wither and whatever he does shall prosper the ungodly are not so but are like the chaff which the wind drives away therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous for the lord knows the way of the righteous but the way of the ungodly shall perish let us pray to god that god helps us to bear fruits and not be a generation that is wicked to god we should pray to god and thank to god at any situation because god is a help and shield if any tribulation rises against us we should know we should know for sure that our god is with us because our god is almighty god who made everything and is standing for us at the right hand of god and is waiting for us to come to him come closer to him please um believe in him because all the idols in the world all the things in the world shall perish but the name but the word of the lord shall stand forever thank you and amen